That's good. We've been ready. You oh. you won't been on air for five <laughs> minutes. Air, uh, okay, this is the ten ten B. We're going to be looking at the soldering and brazing part of our lessons, and in order to be able to do that, we've got to have some material to do that with. Well, you should either be <coughs> involved in building this already. That is your flaring project, or if you have completed it, hopefully you saved your copper. We're going to take the copper that you had from that particular project and we're going to put some squedges on it, okay? And in order to do that, I want to go through the procedure of doing that and make sure that you uh, have an understanding of what's happening. We're going to put it in our block. We need to make sure that the copper is extended far enough out of the block that the Wedging tool does not get lodged into the block itself. You want to, number one, make sure that you have removed the ream, the little ridge on the inside with the reaming tool. Insert the wedging tool. Don't put it on a table. Hold it in your hand. If you're hitting it that excessively, that you've got to hold it down on the table if there's something wrong. Okay. You want to take that, move it out every now and then. Continue if you can see how that's swelling that out. Okay. And of course, as it goes in there deeper and deeper, it's going to be harder and harder to remove back out. But you can see that it is forming a coupling with the pipe that's there. Okay. Now, once you get that built, that should fit over another piece of pipe of the same diameter. Okay. Now, I always like to get into the controversial parts here, opinions. I'm not real fond of this method. Okay. I had rather get a coupling that's already built and use it to attach the two pieces of copper. There's a place for everything. If you've got plenty of room and you have the copper out there and you, where, where you can freely get to it, this is not a bad deal. The advantage of swedging is there is how many joints to leave? One. You only got one. If you got a coupling, you got two joints to leave. Okay? <coughs> I look at it this way. If I can solder one joint, raise one joint, another one ain't a big deal because I already got the heat right there. But that's, a, that's an opinion. I don't like getting on a piece of equipment and start beating on the copper and that kind of stuff. You can do other damage elsewhere if you don't have it braced off. But you can see how that's done. Now, one of the big deals that, that goes on when you're using a torch of any kind is you're going to have fire. What's that mean? You definitely got to have a fire extinguisher close to you, right? All right. See this stuff? Y'all know what that is? Wow. It's cleaner. <coughs> PVC cleaner and glue is highly flammable. Okay. If you're on the job, more than likely, you're going to have some of this laying around because we also run lines with PVC, that is, condensate lines in particular with PVC. See how that's doing? You might say, well, I'm not going to get the flame close to that. You don't have to. Do you all smell it yet? Yeah. Okay. That's what burns. It's not the liquid. It's the fumes. Okay? How serious? Well... A friend of mine was working on a house. People were on vacation. Don't know exactly what they were doing there, but I do know that he was doing some kind of work there. 
he had a can like that set over to the side. He wasn't spilled, nothing of that nature. Somehow or another, he had a flash fire. The house burnt down. He, they had to call the people that were on vacation to tell them that they lost their house while they were doing some construction on it. Now, that's when liability insurance comes into play. Thank God there was nobody lost lives or anything of that nature. And I know the guy, and I'm going to tell you, he done everything that he could to put that fire out. But it just was not possible. Okay, let's move this off to the side. We definitely don't need that over here where we're going to be. All right. Let me go one step further. UGA, which is, you all know that as University of Georgia, which I worked for for many, many, many years. They have a policy called a hot work permit. All right. What that means is if you're going to do anything over a certain temperature, and I forget what the temperature is, you have to have a permit to be able to do it. But it goes a step further. If you're a contractor or someone working for the university, that would have included me, then any time this work requires a temperature, and I want to say it's a thousand degrees, but I'd like to say it's been a long time. If you're going to have anything that exceeds that, and a flame definitely will, then you have to have two people on the job. Okay? You also have to have fire extinguisher on the job. Not just <coughs> out in the truck on the job. Here's another one. You can't leave that job until the last hot work is done and then two hours. Y'all think about that. I get through soldering. If I do something, I solder, I'm done. I can't leave that spot for another two hours. They're serious about it. You know why? They lost some million dollar buildings. So they got real serious. Okay, let's say, let's say that we we heard all that. I just had a fire. I got a fire going on. Where's fire extinguisher? Where's that? Right if you had to think about it, it's too late. It's out of control. You lost. You need to have that fire extinguisher within arm's reach, okay? And we do. We got one right back here. Hopefully somebody's arm could reach it in case of <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're good with that. All right. Let's talk about the difference between soldering and brazing. We use them sometimes loosely and one to describe the other, but there is a definite difference between soldering and brazing. Not to get real, real technical, so let's keep it simple. The biggest difference is the temperature that the filler is applied. With soldering, you're going to be dealing with temperatures of less than 1,000 degrees, I mean less than 800 degrees. Now, I didn't say that the torches were going to be cold. The temperature of the filler rod is going to be applied at temperatures less than 800 degrees. Brazing is above that. Okay? So, Let's take a look at some soldering first. What we're going to do is we're going to work this thing from something very similar to what a plumber would use, which is going to be solder. In this particular case, I so happen to have some 40% tin, 60% lid. Y'all see a problem? Lid we don't use in water lines anymore. Now, it was not uncommon to have 50-50 <coughs> or uh, some, some amount of lid, but now we don't do that. We have a 95-5, 95% uh, tin and 5% antonium. Is that correct, Ricky? Antonium, is that, I think that's the way it's pronounced. It's one of those words I have trouble with, so <laughs> but it's 95-5. But for demonstration purposes, I am going to use the 40-60 here. This do is do they burn the same? basically the same. To be quite honest with you, the lid actually is easier with the, with the lid. To me, it is. But having the proper flux is very important. And one better than that, it's got to be clean. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut this two pieces of pipe here. And uh, that way I'm not dealing with the whole piece here as we work through. Oh, boy. Take it off the list. It's going to be kind of hard to cut that curve. Let's go right here. We covered the uh, proper 
technique in cutting copper on our last, la uh, last lesson. So I won't go over a whole lot on that particular one. Okay. Got to be clean. Take your sandpaper. You notice which way I'm using this sandpaper? I'm going around it. You know why I'm not going straight? It makes grooves in it. If you can look close at that, you'll see grooves in there. I don't want grooves going long ways because that's where the leaks could show up. If I'm doing it this way, it's almost like I'm going to have a whole bunch of little O-rings in there, right? Okay. Now, we want to uh, sand both sides. We can use a pipe cleaning tool to get the inside. Now I've got a clean pipe. Now, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this so I don't forget it. There is one type of brazing material called silfox. It has phosphorus in it, and folks will tell you that you don't need to clean the pipe to do that. Okay? You don't have to clean it up at all. Copper does not rust, but it does oxidize. Okay? You see the shiny part, the oxidation has been cleaned off of. The other part is kind of brownish. It corrodes. Okay? It's just another way of saying oxidize. Let me ask you this. If you're painting a car and you want that car to hold that paint for a long time, would you paint over rusty spots? <laughs> well, why would you want to sort or appraise over rusty spots? It's the same thing. Get it clean. It's very important. Your hands have oil in them. I don't care how many times you wash your hands, don't care how clean you are, you're going to have a certain amount of oil on your hands. It's just natural. If I touch this with my fingers, I'm putting oil on it. Would you paint over an oily spot on a car? Same thing again. It's not going to stick. If it does, you're just having better luck than I would. But you want to have it clean, and you want to use a brush. Not your fingers. Now, I'll tell you this. Some of this flux, by the way, what's the flux do? It keeps it from oxidizing while you put the torches on. Okay? A flame, you've got oxidation going on. This helps prevent that oxidation from coming right back. Okay? So, the flux also will help the solder flow throughout the joint. Now, we do not want to flux the female end, only the, the, the male end. And we want to make sure that we stay far enough away from the end of the pipe, usually about an eighth of an inch, to keep that flux from getting down in it. What do we want inside of the pipes? Yeah. Nothing except the fluid that's, that's supposed to go through it, right? Okay. Okay. Capillary action is what causes that to happen. It doesn't just flow in there. It's actually sucked in there, so it doesn't matter whether it's this away, this away, this away. It's the capillary action that causes the solder to flow. Y'all know what capillary action is? Okay. If you have a straw in a glass, notice that the liquid in the straw will be higher than the liquid in the glass.